Within the vast post-nuclear landscape of the Fallout franchise, there exists no greater looming horror than the Deathclaw, from once being only thought of as the mythical boogeyman of the wastes to becoming a real known fear to all across the wasteland. These veritable grim reapers are far more menacing than most other threats the soul survival will face in their travels. But have we ever stopped to think for a moment, what exactly are Deathclaws? All of these fearsome predators come from a genetically modified form of the Jackson Chameleon, the most chameleon looking of its species. They were created by the United States military through genetic engineering to be used as a near undefeatable front line on the battlefield. Following the aftermath of the Great War, they were able to escape into the wasteland, using their great speed and adaptability to rapidly spread far and wide. They were later refined to the point they are now by the master through his expertise in genetic engineering and the F. EV, forced evolutionary virus. Not much is known about them prior to the master dipping his toes into their evolutionary process. Since then, they have become a threat to any would-be traveler across the wasteland. They were never actually utilized by the master, however, most likely due to an inability to control them or his greater focus on turning people into super mutants. The Enclave was able to recapture several Deathclaws to continue their intelligent Deathclaw research project which aimed to control the minds and actions of the intelligent variety of these dangerous beasts. They did so by using mind control enslavement helmets that allowed complete control. The Deathclaws used in these first few successful experiments were sent to inhabit the then empty Vault 13 following their invasion and enslavement of its residents sending them to the oil rig. With the leader of this pack, Gruthar, not willing to obey orders, they completely broke free of the control of the Enclave and took the vault as their own settlement, quickly developing their intelligence and culture much faster than any of them had anticipated. The player character can even make their way there to interact with them in Fallout 2, being able to complete a quest for them in the process. These intelligent Deathclaws even permitted a small group of humans to live in the vault with them, assisting in areas where the Deathclaws are physically unable to complete tasks. This freedom would not last long, however, as one unknown wastelander believed them a grave threat. They decided to take it upon themselves to damage the vault's mainframe and attempt to kill the Deathclaw matriarch, Kareth. This forced Gruthar to do things he had hoped to never have to, ordering his pack to steal livestock from NCR Brahmin herds in the area just to survive. These actions led to their total annihilation. Both Deathclaws and humans alike within the vault were wiped out by the titan that is Frank Horrigan of the Enclave. Following these events, there are only two remaining intelligent Deathclaws, Goris and Zarn. They have not been noted or seen since their appearance within Fallout 2, so it is believed that they are the final two across the wasteland, leaving all others to be instinct-driven murder machines with no semblance of consciousness or reason. The only exception being an occurrence of non-instinct-driven behavior present within Fallout 4, where a Deathclaw will be non-hostile to the player. During the Museum of Witchcraft quest, the player can return an egg to its nest. If the player does so, the mother of the egg will simply watch and allow them to leave peacefully. Just make sure not to touch the nest again, or you'll go from piece to pieces. The physical body of the Deathclaw is unlike any other, having been genetically modified in many ways to be a peak predator. These beasts stand at an astounding 10 feet tall, towering over most other life in the wasteland. Their genetic sequence was edited to allow for a full five digits on each hand. Every individual digit topped with razor sharp 12 inch claws that can eviscerate any unarmored opponent instantly. The only downside to these gargantuan finger blades being that they obstruct the ability of the Deathclaw to make full use of their added opposable thumbs and human-like hands. Their claws are hooked to allow for the capture and not so easy release of prey that is so unlucky enough to be hunted by these nightmares. In Fallout 4, they're depicted having raptor-like feet with one large claw in the center. Their legs allow them to leap a great distance in mere seconds, allowing them to catch up to any escaping prey. While their offensive capabilities are unlike any other, their defense is exceptionally profound to match. Covered in a very thick hide that protects against most non-projectile based attacks, there have even been a few examples of death claws with the ability to actively camouflage themselves and blend in much greater with the environment around them. These are referred to as chameleon death claws. This variation, however, is not truly invisible like that of the Night Stalker found in the Mojave in Big Mountain. They are carnivores, with no past evidence being 
shown otherwise. This is obvious through their large, sharp teeth which protrude from their massive jaws of death, their nose being highly sensitive and eyes having a pale color as their sight is abhorrent, having degraded greatly, unknown whether due to excess experimentation and exposure to the FEV or through revolving it out because it was not necessary for survival. This is, however, outweighed by their unnaturally high auditory and olfactory perception, being able to hear and smell better than Daredevil could ever even hope to. As shown in Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 1 within Vault 13, Deathclaws exhibit similar behavior to that of wolves, coming together to form packs where an alpha male and alpha female pair are in charge. Due to their innate sensitivity to light and sound, Deathclaw packs often migrate away from inhabited areas. They are highly territorial and will not leave a location once they've settled into it unless the pack leaders are dealt with, or the entire pack is wiped out. The Deathclaws we encounter in the modern Fallout games are all of lower intelligence. Unable to communicate with other species, however, they are still smart enough to form hierarchies within packs and are aware of when their claws are dulled and need sharpened. They can sometimes be found clinging to the sides of buildings or atop cliff sides, waiting to ambush those unlucky enough to become their prey. They act almost purely on instincts, being at the top of the food chain gives them this luxury. When it comes to their ability to reproduce, Deathclaws are of an oviparous species, meaning that the female Deathclaws lay clutches of eggs which are then kept and protected by the alpha male of the pack. These eggs are often laid within nests that are created in dark, damp, sheltered areas for easier protection. These eggs will hatch into newborn Deathclaws similar to their adult counterparts, however lacking the horns, rear spikes, and experience needed to be a peak predator. Their claws, however, are there from birth and grow only sharper and longer over time. It is also a known fact that Deathclaw hides darken as they age, going from a light brown all the way to even as dark as black. There have been many variants of the Deathclaw. Most common, simply your standard Deathclaw, however, there are also many other forms. There are the aforementioned Alpha Male, Alpha Female, and Juvenile Deathclaws. Alpha Male Deathclaws, which are adorned with large, upward-facing horns and rust-colored skin, they are the leaders of packs where they are present and are among the most dangerous variations of their species. They are often paired with a matriarch deathclaw, these being the alpha females of the pack. Often seen surrounded by the juveniles of the species, they will aggro and attack any who dares threaten the juveniles or eggs of the pack. Glowing death claws are nearly impossible to miss, irradiating a faint green glow from between each individual scale, also seeping radiation into a small field around them. Albino death claws, as the name implies, are nearly all white with pale features. The only explanation for this coloring would be a genetic defect that took place during reproduction as it has no benefit over the standard version for survivability. The Chameleon Deathclaw changes its colors mid-battle, depending on the circumstances, shifting between orange, green, red, teal, and even gray. These are Deathclaws the love child of genetic engineering and the US military, further perfected later by the master in Fallout 1 reaching the peak predator that they are now. Here's to hoping these creatures of horror can stay confined within fiction. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, please subscribe as it is a huge help and let me know in the comments if I missed anything. If you're interested in Skyrim lore as well, I actually recently put up a video on Jurgen Windcaller and his lore of who he really might be. Check that one out if it does interest you. Thank you.